Hey everybody, welcome to J Stern Designs and Fit Tip Tuesday. Today during Fit Tip Tuesday, I am taking a break from pants fitting to do a little embroidery project. I'm actually in Kentucky today teaching at the Master Volunteer Seamstress Program where sewing teachers in the area come to learn new techniques and then they go off into the community to teach sewing and I am so excited that I had the opportunity to volunteer to teach there this year and in preparation for that I shot an extra Fit Tip Tuesday before I left so you wouldn't be missing me on Tuesdays. So I also had to finish my daughter's cushion for a bench she has in her reading nook. She's a brand new third grade teacher and I'm so proud of her. So I wanted to make a nice cushion for her reading nook. And of course, instead of just cutting out the fabric and sewing it together and putting in the foam insert, I decided I'd add a little embroidery. Now this cushion is 58 inches long and 14 inches wide. So I wanted to show you how you can get a really big impact in a small amount of time by using machine applique letters. You can see here in front of me, this cushion is gonna say, I love reading. So here's the I love, and I'm just gonna roll it up as I go here. Reading, and I've got it all done except for the last letter. So I wanna talk about my process to get this far, and then I'm gonna show you how to embroider these large letters and get them in the hoop properly so they look like they were all embroidered, embroidered together in one long hoop. All right, so you can see on the back here, this denim has a little bit of stretch to it, so I use soft and sheer fus fusible mesh stabilizer on the back, and I fused a one long piece down the entire length of this, um, you know, of this piece of denim, and then I'm going to use additional stabilizer to put it in the hoop. But this way, I've got two layers of stabilizer: one fused to the to the stretch denim, and the other is going to be in the hoop. So that was my first step in preparing this: fusing soft and sheer fusible stabilizer to the wrong side. And that's really going to help control the stretch of the denim. It's not super stretchy, but it's always good to make your surface as stable as possible. The next thing I did was I drew a chalk line down the center of this fabric. Now this fabric is wider than I need, so I'm going to cut it to size after I finish embroidering. So this is actually 18 inches wide and I made it a little bit longer than I needed just to be sure I could cut it out and center the lettering when I was finished. All right, so the next step was to pick out the letters I wanted to use. And I'm working with Foff's um, 360 Embroidery System Ultra Premier Embroidery System um, Plus version two. And in this software, they have lots of lettering you can choose from. So I picked one of their applique letters and I sized it to eight inches high. So you can see here, and then I printed templates of each letter I needed so I could plan and place them. So you can see here, this is one of the life-size templates and I cut around it really closely because I wanna be able to see close to the edges when I'm placing them. So my line that I drew down the length of my cushion Here's the end of it right here. So I can use that as a guide with the crosshairs on my template. And I'm just gonna darken those in so you can see where the crosshairs are. So I'm just gonna color those in purple so you can see. And basically this, is the cent this marks the center of the design. Okay, so there are the crosshairs. But here's the thing, I'm not gonna use the crosshairs to center this design in the hoop like you might think. I mean, you can do that if you want to because here is my hoop and I drew myself a line horizontally in the hoop that marks the center of the hoop in the horizontal direction. 
I really, um, I'm not going to draw a second line that's vertical because instead of using these crosshairs, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the straight edge of the G and basting in the hoop to make sure it's in the right spot. So to mark the position of this last letter, the first thing I'm going to do is trim off the extra paper a little bit closer like this and I'm going to position it right next to my N so I can make reading here and so I'm lining up the horizontal line with the horizontal line that I drew on my fabric so the guideline is lining up with my horizontal line and I'm moving it so it's within um, I don't know, a quarter inch of the edge of the end here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw my crosshair. I'm going to draw the vertical one and the horizontal one. I'm going to do them both, but I'll show you how this is going to work in a minute. All right, so I'm just going to draw this crosshair here. And then I'm also going to draw a line over to the side that's about a quarter inch away from the end, like this. That's where I'm going to have my basting in the hoop line up. So I know that it's going to stitch out right. So I have two visual guides for positioning this design. First I'm going to do the center of the design is right here. Okay, and I'll just darken my horizontal. And then I also have the left side of the letter, basically. All right, so I put um, a, a horizontal line here. I'm going to use some KK2000 to, to adhere the fabric into the hoop. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a spray. Now here's the thing. I used to be a huge 505 temporary adhesive spray lover until I read the caution on the can. This temporary adhesive spray doesn't have anything toxic in it. It's um, safe for the planet. It's safe for you. So I have converted myself to a KK2000 lover from Sulky. So I will put a link below this video to KK2000 if you don't live near a sewing store where you can pick it up. All right. So after I've got that all set here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this in the hoop and I'm going to fold up my fabric on my line so I can see that I'm positioning the line that I drew on my fabric. I want it to line up with the line in my hoop. So I'm just going to roll this up so I can see. I'm just going to peek and I'm just going to use my stiletto here to hold the fabric right on the line and I can see that it's lining up right there so that's lined up I'm just gonna straighten it out like this then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put the stiletto on the fabric and I'm gonna peek to make sure so I'm actually picking it up and moving it slightly to get the line to line up with the mark I put on my hoop. So I'm holding it, peeking, making sure the tip of my stiletto is on the line. Okay, and once it is on this side, I'm going to go ahead and just put one pin here. And the pin is just going to help hold it a little bit better. I want to make sure it doesn't slide around. Then, like I said, I'm going to come back here, put the stiletto right on the line, and make sure, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see I'm poking it a little bit. It's right there. It's right on the line. So now I know that I've got this fabric in the hoop straight with the line on my fabric. And I'm just going to put one more pin for safety. I'm going to stick it way up here in the corner. And as long as you have two pins, nothing is going to move. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my machine. I'm going to select the G 
and I'm going to stitch the basting out and then I'm going to come back and show you the basting. Um, I'm not going to drag my camera over there to show you, but I'm literally just going to put the fabric in the hoop, line it up, and stitch the basting, and then I'm going to come back and show you that the basting is matching my line here. All right, so that's what we're going to do now. And just as an added tip, you can, if you're working with something long, I roll it up, okay, so it's in a manageable length, and then I pin it together like this, and that way I don't have this big long piece of fabric hanging over my you know, off the end of my machine and dragging my hoop, okay? So my hoop is all set. I'm gonna go stick this on my machine, stitch the basting, and I'll be right back. All right, let's take a look at this. You can see the basting in the hoop is showing me exactly where the design is going to stitch and you can see right here that's going to be perfectly aligned with the side of my end there which is kind of cool. Um, one thing that I'm noticing is it's a skosh. Um, these letters came out like a teeny bit like a few millimeters different in size even though I chose the same size for each letter. So this letter is hanging down a little bit more here. I have a tiny bit of play in my eight inch hoop. So I'm going to move the design up as far as it'll go before I start embroidering. So the next step is you put the, you put your hoop back on the machine. It's gonna stitch out the outline of the G and that will give us the guide to place our fabric. So you're gonna need pieces of fabric to use for applique. And basically I just cut a piece that's just a little bit bigger than what I need for the applique. And I'll show you what to do with this in a minute. But basically you can see now, I can take this pin out because my, my fabric is now basted to the stabilizer in the hoop. And it also is a really good check to make sure your design is positioned properly. So I'm gonna go back to my machine, I'm gonna move the design up a couple more millimeters just to get it slightly more centered on the end vertically, and then I'm gonna embroider the next step. I'll be right back. All right, so now you can see the G has been stitched through the applique fabric the next step is to use a small pair of embroidery scissors to trim away the extra fabric. I will tell you that if you have little embroidery scissors with curved blades, it works much easier, but I have misplaced mine, so I'm using these small straight edge um, scissors. And basically, I want to just get as close to that stitching as I can without cutting into the letter. So I'm just holding down the extra or the tail here and I'm gently pulling it to give myself a little tension and I'm going as close as I can. For letters that have an internal curved area we have to cut out, for now I'm just going to go right past that and I'm just going to do the whole outer edge first. Like this. All right, and I'm just going to whiz my way around. You do want to take your time on this step because if you can trim it close, then you won't see any hairs or loose fabric on the outside edge of your applique when it's finished. So I'm just going to go all the way around the outside here.
Now, if something happens and you don't get close enough in an area, you can rub the edge of the fabric with your fingers and it will fray. And then you can trim the long threads off and that will help neaten up your applique. So I'll just rub it and trim any areas that I might have not gotten close enough on my first, you know, trim. But basically you can see that that's pretty close. Now I'm going to go inside and I'm using the tension of the fabric itself to get really close like that. And then I'll be able to grab it and slide my scissors down the other side of the inside of the G here. You know, the cool thing is, because you're using fabric applique, you can really make a big design in a fraction of the time that it would take if you were embroidering these letters like a solid embroidery. Um, you know, a letter this size, if it was completely filled with stitching, could take up to, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. So this really is a time saver to do applique. And you can pick so many, there's so many pretty fabrics you can use. All right. All right, so you can see now I've got my G all nice and clipped. I'm just going to rub it gently to get rid of any extra um, long hairs. And then I'm going to put it back on the machine, and it's going to do the applique for you. So you don't have to worry about following a curved edge. One of the beauties of doing machine applique is it comes out perfect every time because the hoop is moving and the needle is going up and down. You're not guiding it. So that's another kind of nice thing about uh, machine embroidered applique. All right, so I am going to put this back on and stitch out the last step. I'll Right, look how nice this came out. Um, it's really kind of instant gratification when you're thinking about large-scale embroidery projects. Um, the last step is to take out the basting and trim excess stabilizer away. I will tell you I started doing this with plain fabric and the adhesive spray and then halfway through I realized kids are going to be sitting on this. It's the top of a cushion. So to make it more durable, I'm just going to go in and do a little maybe grid quilting or something to, you know, sew the, the letters to the backing a little bit better because, you know, I just want to make sure the fabric holds up under all those reading third graders in the reading nook. So I'm super excited. Um, I'm just going to use my scissors to pick at my basting and really if you pick out a bunch of stitches and you know break the stitching every few stitches the, the threads really come out in long um, pieces. Now remember I slid up my letter a little bit to get it to line up just a little bit better so the letter is actually on top of the basting here so I'm just gonna clip the ends of that. Basically, I really wish I had more time to do more embroidery tutorials. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm forever trying to fit them into my schedule because I love machine embroidery. And um, I'm going to really try to incorporate more 
machine embroidery videos into my weekly lineup. Not on Fit Tip Tuesday as a regular, but... All right, so now that the basting is removed, I'm not going to be super concerned to trim it um, super close for this project because I'm going to leave it in there and I'm going to put a piece of batting on top, quilt the letters a little bit, and then, you know, sew the cushion on. So I'm going to leave, you know, this is the perfect use for a soft and sheer cutaway because I'm not really going to fuss with cutting it away super neat because it won't show on the right side. All right. All right, so... All right, I am super excited about this. I love reading. If I were going to be doing all of this embroidery, I love reading. That would have taken me a week and a half of just solid embroidery. So you can see we're using large scale applique letters can give you a big impact in a small amount of time. If you have any questions or comments about working with big letters, working with life size templates, please post those below and I will help you. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, segue from pants fitting for a minute. I will be back next week with another pants fitting video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.